Fitzy and Weber. Hey guys, it's Fitzy and Weber. Welcome to the podcast. We're talking. To, we're doing some dodgies today, and I love this stuff. We're hearing stories from you. When did you do some renos to the house and didn't get permission from the council? Guilty. I just put 12 <laughs> stories on at home. <laughs> Stuff them. Mm-hmm. You know what? Sometimes it's a long process. It can cost you a fortune. I've gone up 80 metres high. I mean, if, you, if you're in with your neighbours, you got to get to know your neighbours well. Yep. Leave a couple of cases out the front of their house and then all of a sudden install that new pokey room down yeah, in you your can, house. You can. I've actually dug a hole which goes from my bedroom to the local pub. That's, that's Underground. Great, yeah. well, did Jack Nicholas do that? Oh, that's right. From his place to the Playboy Mansion. That's right. That was the urban myth, wasn't it? Oh, Hef. Jack's here. I'm here. Here's Johnny. <laughs> Classic. Hey, I'm in the bedroom with 12 of them. Shut up and go home. Hey, do you know who else is good at impressions? And Tommy. Tom. Yeah. Is it Hot Impression Wednesdays? <laughs> Tommy, um, Tom, let's start with a bit of Borat. Could you do Donny Brasco? Could you do... I, I can't do Donny Brasco. <laughs> oh, I want to forget about it. That's, That's good. good. That's, That's good. good. Could you do... Yeah. Do um, a Borat for me, mate. Yes, he much. That's strong. Do uh, Kramer versus Kramer when they when he, he doesn't get to see the kids. <laughs> mm. <laughs> do, that, do that one. Can you Could do you... Alf from Malmac um, when they try to send him back into space? Oh, yeah. Hey. I kill me. Is that good? That's good. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Here, a kitty, kitty. Okay, so who's doing the impressions? Do you <laughs> want to take on. over? Because this is Tom's segment. Might better hand it over can to you me. Do, um, yeah. uh, can you do Sloth from um, the Goonies? <laughs> when he sees all the kids at the end. Can you do... Yes. Hey, you guys. Can you do extra number three from um, Parent Trap? Do Chunk. Party. Chunk. Hey, you guys. That's good. Can you do um the mask, Jim Carrey in the mask? Sure, He never did it like that. Can you do your cat Can getting run over? Was it? Oh, don't do it. Can you no, cat? do um <laughs> Gough Whitlam. Well, may we say, God save the Queen, because nothing will save the Governor General. That's good. Oh, Could you go. do Bob Hawke when we won the America's Cup? Oh. Anyone who sacks an employee yeah. is a bum. Any boss who sacks the Hey, a bum. No, that's terrible, mate. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty no. good from you, Tom. Um, yeah, nothing Tom. to do with the actual <laughs> content of the podcast, but uh, <laughs> enjoy the podcast. The, the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. I do love this because, I mean, there's some certain councils. It takes a while to get over the line to get approval. Oh, man, it's a circus at a few of them. It's just a few renos. Absolute circus. Renos that you want to do at home. So tricky as well, this whole land, grass, how much you have to have of each. Does it oh, really ratios, matter? Yeah, setbacks, all of that. This is over in uh, London. A wealthy accountant by the name of Graham, Graham Wilden was. Graham has just <laughs> got back. Well, Graham Wilden was. Hey, Graham. Um, he's just got he's just got out of jail. He was locked up for six weeks because of this legal battle that he's been having over his ten thousand square feet complex that he's got at home. Mm-hmm. This is the thing. Graham installed a few things in the house that he didn't get permission from the council. Right. He installed a bowling alley, a cinema, a casino <laughs> and a bar in the plush extension of his home eight years ago without planning permission. He's been fighting them the whole time and unfortunately he's been sent to jail. Yeah, I think he was fine up until casino um, when he was charging $20 entry fee. And the chocolate wheels set up, he had the pokies. There's Graham there at the front of his house set. He's back. He said, I'm up for another fight. I'll keep <laughs> continuing my reno. Oh, his bowling alley looks yeah, good. Yeah, because he's, bo- he's playing... He's He's bowling in his in suit. suit. I mean, he's a well-known accountant, but he said, I'll keep fighting this. I love my house. I mean, if he's got that much money too, I would suggest they look into some of his accounting practices. <laughs> it looks like he has not been probably adding his own tax Well, I told up, you, at the, my first house, the, the house that I, BJ and I bought first, we got a good deal because the woman just wanted to get rid of it. Mm. And we found out because she split up with her husband because he was a dodgy accountant. Okay, so he'd oh. gone to jail too. He went to jail, sir. So the first thing BJ and I, when we got into the house, we were so excited, yep. first home, 
And we got in there, and the first thing we would do, we were going through the walls to see if we Tapping. could find money. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the number one thing you do at a, at, at a house inspection, too, is to check the cupboards to see if someone's clothes are missing. So if all the male clothes have gone, you know that they're <laughs> going to have get a sell. good deal. <laughs> yep. Fire sale. There's a breakup. Um, did, we want to hear from people who didn't get permission from the council. Mick in Bankstown, what happened, Mick? Yeah, g'day, boys. And uh, Sarah, how's it going? Yeah. I, um, I've spent about $110,000 on my house renovation and the uh, sunroom out the back, and I've knocked, knocked down walls inside the house. And yeah. I've probably avoided about $20,000 from the uh, from the council. From so. the council. So okay. any of the neighbours, did you talk to the neighbours, Mick, or you just you, you had to do the work real quietly? No, nah, mate. My neighbours are all good. I have beers with them, so... There was no dramas there at all with any of them. They were all fine about it. Someone's got a garage right up against my fence line. I didn't complain about that. They didn't complain about mine. So we're oh, all good on you. All the community against the council, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, you sound pretty relaxed about it, Mick. I mean, what was the? I mean, there shouldn't be an issue with the internal walls, yeah. should there? Unless it was heritage listed uh, or something. It can be, but it's a structural thing. You've got to. Like, oh, all right. Up the roof of the house, See, you know, be in the apartment uh, that I lived in, Mick, the guy who lived upstairs, which was the top floor, he'd punched a hole in the roof and put a staircase in. Oh, oh so he had direct yeah, access. Yeah, so he had access straight up the top. Great. So he Did he got, get caught? <laughs> no, never got caught. Never an issue. No one's going to go and look at it. Could, so, could, could anyone else get up to no, the rooftop? No, just him. The oh, stairs, that is good. The stairs were only in his place. That is it's awesome. It's great until you sell, isn't it? I have mm-hmm. a girlfriend who they just finished renovating and they had false walls so that when they came to do the check, yeah. they weren't. there was no view. And as soon as they'd done the council check, they took the walls down so they had views over all of the houses and into everyone's yards and things, oh, which hadn't perfect. been approved. Claire, Claire's given us a call from Dural. You were living in a house that didn't get council approval for something big. Claire, what was it? Which hadn't been approved. What's that, Claire? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, got, got you, you there, Claire. Got you. What was it, Claire? Hi, yes. We actually bought a house, so this wasn't us, but we bought a house and it had been sold to us prior from the guy that built the property, yeah. and he actually moved the fence posts and took 500 square metres from the council. <laughs> oh, that's wow. game. So then did you did the council then approach you, Claire, and say we need that cl- that land back? Exactly, um, exactly. But we, found, we only found out when we went to sell, yeah. and it was brought to our attention. So now it's sort of... In the midst of Mate. being sorted out, and everything in our backyard isn't council approved, so yeah, it's just oh, a big what a pain in the in, bum! In Sydney, oh, five hundred yeah, square them. meters is oh, massive. Huge. That is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, there was, it was clear there was a guy we know, and he thought he got an absolute steal on a block of land, mm. um, and then he looked into it. He it was a rush purchase. He looked into it, and it had been zoned for a kids' playground. Nothing else could be bought on it. <laughs> Built oh, on no. it. Yeah, so he's trying to get himself out of that one at the moment. Uh, thank you, Tamika and Penrith. Welcome to the show. Uh, what did your in-laws hey, get done? Going? Okay, so uh, me and my partner currently live in the house, but about, oh, I think, I did say 20, but it might have been nearly 30 years ago. They bought, I believe it was a two-bedroom house. Yep. Good block, good size. They actually built on two bedrooms on the front of the house where the veranda was. Yeah. And the kitchen was small. It was converted into a bigger kitchen. It had a laundry on the other side. Yeah. They built a big laundry on the back of that. And the garage out the back, you can see down the driveway. You can still see the garage door, but it's only skinny. And they've actually built a granny flat. Oh, oh this is really awesome. That. They've decked it out for big families, Tamika, haven't they? Has your front porch you've converted into two extra rooms? Well played. <laughs> Like, it was like a level. It was just like a bit of flooring. It wasn't actually like a veranda mm-hmm. so that like dropped off. So they've just taken it up. The front door where it is now, that was actually just a wall. Yeah. And the front door that it used to be, that's like the door to one of the bedrooms. This is great. Wow. just goes straight into a bedroom. And they're pretty good. Like it was well, my you... it was my mother-in-law's father that done it. He's pretty handy. So. There's, a good, there's a TV show in this, isn't it? It's called <laughs> Without a Permit. You buy, you buy a three-bedroom home and then oh, you yeah. end up with a six-bedroom oh, home. Oh. <laughs> what do you know? It's, Thanks it's to make like up. the, uh, what was the, you got a door, you got a gym. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same. It's just how you look at it, isn't L- it? Lex, what's the story you've got? G'day, guys. I've, um... I work in the, in, in the construction industry and we've 
we've just finished the job uh, where the client went ahead to try and update his front yard uh. in a heritage listed area yeah. and the next door neighbour got whiffed, called council on him, stopped work order, two years, an extra 150k. <gasps> oh, oh, that's unkind. That's, that, I, that is a dog act. Isn't it? It's a, look, Do you know I, what though? I mean, they're the rules. Like I, I know it is. But 150 grand, like that's oh, a lot. A, to a do guy to I someone. knew, right? He bought, um, he bought like a farm in a green wedge area in a green zone area, and cleared out all these trees. The council came along and went, "What are you doing? This is green wedge. You can't do that." Mm. So they then he then had to buy the amount of plants to reinstall the trees that were there that he'd cut down and pay a fine on top of that. Oh, shocker. Cost, See, I, cost I, him over $200,000. I can understand it's if it's the outside of the house. If you're doing stuff on the inside and, like, let it go. Yeah, I agree. It's your house. I mean, that's the problem with Miller's Point, where you've got all these, these old heritage-listed houses, which the government's been selling off because mm. they were commission living, and you can't do anything to them. There's nothing you can do because it's all heritage listed. I'll put a plunge pool in. <laughs> put anything but a swing in. Plunge what? Put Extra a plunge pool, pool in, like mate. Dickie. How good is exploring our amazing backyard again? And ticking off all the big Aussie things, pineapples, bananas, melons. For oh, hearing you say that makes me hungry. Head to whatif.com and start planning your big Aussie adventure. What if? It's Aussie for travel. The Queen, she's at Buckingham Palace. We watched it this morning when we rocked up to work. And for the very last time, drives through the gates to Buckingham Palace. She has left Holyrood pa- a Palace. Now, that was over in Edinburgh. She'd been there for quite a few days and there was quite a few mourners out the front. Did you see some like, so some people were lining up for 12 hours. Yeah, balling too. Just well, to- out the front of Buckingham Palace, there are people who still won't get access, but they've already been there for 36 hours, so they've got to wait the next 12 or in so. In the rain too. In Standing the rain. there with their umbrellas as a bucket's mm. down. And the, the the media, I mean, what you just hear in Australia, we got Koshi and Natter over there, we got Alison mm. Langdon's over there with Carlos, everyone's over there at the moment. I mean, the media pack, we were there for the wedding. Remember yeah, it was how huge. The, the media section from, a, city. from around the world is mm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Remember we were crammed in with Sandra Sully and she was yep. giving us the AFL scores while we were that's watching the wedding? That's right. It's just the best. There's moments, though, like, it, like this where some people benefit. And I know you don't want to benefit from the Queen's death, but I've been watching the news quite a bit. And in Edinburgh, right, when everyone was getting interviewed out the front, getting emotional about the Queen and, you know, sharing their thoughts, right out the front of Holyrood Palace, where the Queen was, was a Scottish gift uh, shop, yeah, right? Yeah. And what I want to... The thing that I just went, this is unbelievable, that they've set up, the media have set up right there and every person that they're interviewing that there was a Scottish gift shop in the background with the best pun name. I'm going to put it up on the screen now. It's called... Oh. It's called oh. This'll Do Nicely. This'll Do this'll Nicely. Do nicely. Now, I didn't know Thistle was... It's the national flower it of is. Scotland. Oh, that is clever. Very so pretty. come and get your Scottish gifts from This'll Do Nicely. Scottish gifts, Scottish that. food, This'll Do Nicely. I have found out there was an article written on it as well. They mm-hmm. basically sold out everything that was in the store. I bet they did, yeah. Because Those souvenir stores would have gone through the roof. See, I love a good pun. Oh, Thistle Do Nicely. In a good business name. <laughs> 13, 20, 14, get involved. We've got some great ones here that people have got involved with already. There was a car hire place up at the top of WA in Broome called Broom Broom. Okay, that makes sense. Um, there used to be a fishing shop in Benalla called the Master Bader. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Dangerous. Fl- florist in Bunbury called Florist Gump. Okay, yeah, I like that. There was a window. Uh, there was a window place called the pain, uh, pain in the glass. Mm-hmm. That's good. Barber shop called Barber Black Sheep. Well, I told you about the. <laughs> I told you about the hairdresser that I used to work next to, and it had a whole lot of sports memorabilia in the front window, and it was called Sports Back and Sides. Oh, that's, that's not yeah, that's really, really good. good Thirteen really twenty four ten. We want you to get involved here. Italian restaurant we came across as a family called Chow Down. Oh, yes. Chow. Chow down. Chow down. Does anyone remember a place on Bondi Beach called How the Focaccia? <laughs> <laughs> you beauty. <laughs> Very popular and Le- not bad, thanks. A Lebanese restaurant called Fully Tabouli. Okay. Uh, Guns and Hoses was a good one. Oh, yes. Where Guns and sold, Hoses. They sold hose, hoses. Love that. And there is a grocer's in London that someone came across called Dolce and Banana. 
Very Quite good. often Thai restaurants have a little bit of a pun um, tied into it, like Titanic. Thai-rific. Uh, yeah, Thai-rific. Uh, bedding stores well, also. Well, remember I said um, we had the local restaurant from where we grew up, and that was the Indiana Zone. That was Indiana yep. Zone and, and the Corner of Doom. Corner of Doom. <laughs> So long for a title. <laughs> Didn't you have the one of the uh, Back to the Futon? Oh, Back to the Futon. <laughs> a very a, popular a betting store. Get involved, Sydney. Anyone that gets on the show goes in the running for first class and 50k. Michael in Lewisham, what's the punny business name that you saw, Mick? I want to be a bit greedy. I've got two fellas. The yeah. first one was in Bondi. Uh, it was a hairdressing salon and it was called Blonde Dye Bleach. Blonde eye oh, bleach. bleach. Blonde eye bleach. bleach. And the second one was a, a funeral parlour, which is actually still in King Street, Newtown. Um, it's right next door to a very old bookshop, and the bookshop's called Better Red Than Dead. Oh, oh Better Red Than Dead. Re- this, see, oh, you That's remember good. this stuff. Let's go to Joe. Joe, what's the business pun name that you've got? Oh, it's my husband's driving school, yep. and it's uh, I want to pee driving school. I want to oh. pee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want an owl, I want to pee. That's good, isn't it? I told you about that mate of mine who had the landscaping business called Yard Hacker. Yep. Oh, instead yard of hacker. hard yakka. Oh, yard 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 That's good. Yard. Yeah, needed a bit of explaining. But I <laughs> thought it was good. <laughs> in this room, most yeah, things do. The tow truck company with the camel on the front, they use the camel as the... Okay. Camel toe? The camel toe toe, yeah. <laughs> Better than moose knuckle. Oh. Which I well, don't what are you moose knuckling your well, car for? I don't think it's a registered business. <laughs> Chris Malone just More of just me a bad look. <laughs> Chris Malone said there's a great leather boot shop on King's <laughs> Rome in Chelsea, London, just, just called R... Souls. Oh, oh yep, yeah. we are souls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hang on. on. We got Judy here, Tom. We got time for Judy. Yeah, let's get Judy on. Come on, Judy. What's your punny business name? Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, the dress shop in Orange called Frockwork Orange. Oh, oh yeah. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. Do the, do the locals get it, though, look, Judy? That's the thing. It's very creative. <laughs> Because Orange has got a sort of an older population too, I reckon. Cool. So, uh, Gee, I think that's that was great. Clever. You're winning for me so far. Let's keep them coming. The lines are full already. 13, 24, 10. Yep. Punny business names. Yep. Louise in South Wentworthville. What was the punny business name you saw, Louise? Hey, guys. How are you going? I remember a long time ago we were holidaying in Noosa and there was a specialty shop that only sold boxes and ties. And the name of the shop was The Ballroom. The Ballroom. Boxes and because ties. Because of the boxer shorts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Too actual clever. boxes. Yeah, so was boxes I. I didn't realise. Yep, the ballroom. <laughs> ball room. like it. That's good, Louis. Thank you. Let's go to Brooke in Blue Mountains. Punny business names, Brooke. Good morning, guys. How are we going? Good. Yeah, good. A few years ago, I registered the business name for my little wine band. Chardonnay or should I go? Oh, oh so I don't know. Should, should I, I go, go now? Exactly. <laughs> oh, Brookie, really? you're clever. Is it going well? Well, funnily enough, I haven't actually got it off the ground yet, but yeah. it's looking like a retirement plan. Yeah, okay, well, you well, should go then. Sure, you probably should go at the moment. <laughs> Let's go to Adrian and Lernia now. What's your punny business name? Yeah, it was a trucking company and it was called Get Trucked. Get oh, trucked. It's simple. Yeah. Makes basic, sense. Basic yet effective. Kathy and Kalani Vale, what was the punny business name you saw? Rub No Tugs. Oh. <laughs> what was okay, the so business? Was it, was it, a rugs it was business? a remedial massage big business that was on the side of a van, mm. and we were walking past a kid's park, and then my partner goes, check out that, and we were like, what? That's a massage business. It's I mean, probably a little it's, bit too close to the yeah, I think it's almost spelling out exactly what it's offering. Yeah. With, um, it's being too blunt in its messaging. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly. I mean, I thought it was like a, if it was a rug store yeah, rugs, no and tugs. nothing to actually do with what might happen at the end, then that's yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> but you're being too obvious. Kathy, thank you. And I'm well, sure I'm... it's a great service. Did your husband enjoy it? <laughs> I'm yeah, joking, no, Kathy. He's gone. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, she's I'm, spent I'm the joking, money. Kathy. Nev in Mount Cola. <laughs> what did you yeah, say, Nev? Hey, buddy, my store is it was a store, a furniture store called Knobs and Knockers. Knobs, Knobs and, and Knockers. knockers. Door handles. Door yep. Awesome. Good on you, Nev. This is thank you, crazy. buddy. I mean, keep them coming. We've been getting so many. I mean, how, how the Fakashi is still one of yeah, my favourites. It's good. I kind of like the ballroom for the boxer shorts. Mm. 
That was good. Really clever. Very clever. I told you about my mate with Yard Hacker. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not great either. <laughs> um, well done to everybody. You're right. Look how many calls are coming through. Tommy, is that last man standing or does everybody have punny names? No, more punny names. We'll get to oh some more God. after the news. Inclu- oh, there's one here. What um, have you got? Jack the Stripper, a mm-hmm. UK oh. male establishment. And Frying Nemo, the fish and chip <laughs> shop. Oh, that's good. Oh, I like that. Coming through. If you want to make clown 13, fish. 24, 10, if you want to get involved. Deb in Cabarita. What's the business name that you've got, Deb? Uh, this is on a van that you see driving around quite a bit called Blind Man Driving. Blind oh. Man Driving. Yeah, it's like the blind man from the village, isn't it? <laughs> Good work, Deb. Good work. Do you want to employ them, though? That's the thing. Oh, he's the blind man. Oh, God, you, you wouldn't want to crash that van, though, would no, you? No, you wouldn't. You would have got, of course. How did he ever get his licence? Thanks, Deb. Jessica on the Central Coast. Give us your business name. I saw a refrigeration company called Licence to Chill. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love it. Love it. Did they, did did they work hard, Jess, or were they pretty chilled out themselves? <laughs> Probably pretty chilled. When you go to, um, when you're searching for somebody to help you out, like if you need your fridge fixed or something, yeah. do you go for the punny name as the punter? I, I, do you go punny over um, the best in refrigeration? Personally, mm. I do, because you know they're a bit creative. Yeah, I don't want creative. I just want my fridge fixed. <laughs> yeah, <fair> cool. <laughs> Shanky's given us a call what? from Gladesville. Business name, Shanky, what do you got? Hey, guys. There is a Mexican slash South American restaurant uh, here in Paddington called Tequila Mockingbird. Oh, yeah, yes. Tequila Mockingbird. Yeah, Mockingbird. Yep, famous. Yeah, very good. And that's a that's a, that's a a very popular mm. drag name, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Tequila Mockingbird. Tequila Mockingbird. Um, you're the first Shanky we've had on the show as well, Shanky. Oh, excellent. There you go. Thanks very much. Never, I've never made one myself, but if mm-hmm. I ever go to prison, I'll give you a call. Oh, there he is. <laughs> the shank. Look how many calls will keep coming through, yeah, Tommy. Yeah, you want Raj? Raj is Oh, yeah, Raj. Guys. How are you, buddy? Hey, good. How are you doing? Yeah, well, well, bud. Uh, punny business names. What do you got? Um, it was an eyebrow salon in New York called Pluck You. Oh, ah. simple. See, I would go to that one. Yeah, that's I'd creative. That. I'd go to that. That's really good. So that's what you're there for. As long as they fix my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> definitely go to that one. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Let's talk about a fancy supermarket, guys. Uh, Harris Farm Markets, you know these supermarkets. They're sort of a smaller chain, but they're quite... Um, they're a fancy chain of supermarkets. Well, they do their own juice. I like their own juice. Yeah, you, know, you don't they rock up five bucks for a juice. Yeah, it's yep. not bad, is it? Yes, please. And quite often they do a beautiful floral display at the front as well. We go to the one in Rose Bay, and it is an absolute dream. The bread selection, yeah. the pasta variety is extraordinary. Don't you lose yourself? I took the kids to Bondi Junction Food Court the other day. You lose mm. yourself in places like that, don't That's you? That's good, isn't it? What did you go for? What did you end up eating? I've done a lot of time in that place. It's, you, it's, my brain is not working. No, no. No, I've got a barramundi. Barramundi oh. and a salad. Did yeah, you really? Interesting yeah. choice for yeah. a food Is that for the fish shop at the end? Yeah, right at the end. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I went there on a date one time. I took Lisa there for dinner. Oh. She said, where are we going? I said, it's a surprise. We had crayfish. Told you. In the food court. Food and a beer. courts. Food courts are the best place to eat. And you look world. out to the harbour. It's extraordinary it's food court. So this fancy supermarket, where are we? Lane Cove, guys, on the North Shore there. Um, it's got 500 different cheeses to choose from. That's too much. What so do they cheese? call that again, Tom? A lot. Fromagerie? Uh, yeah, no. fromagerie, yeah. Um, I saw Harris Farm had a sale on Daffinoir. Oh, Daffinoir. Oh, there was oh, you with a fork. fork. Oh, my I've gosh. never tried Daffinoir. No. Oh, it's good. Oh. It's good. Uh, Tom, your favourite cheeses as we do cheese chat, if you've got any antique roadshow style <laughs> no, we music don't maker. don't do cheese um, chat. Your triple not... brie that I know you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, stunning um, triple brie. A nice, um, oh, there's a nice one um, mm-hmm. called um, Udder Delights. Oh, Udder Delights. from South Adder. Australia. Udder Delights. Udder Delights. Delights. Other delights. Beautiful what, camembert, guys. What would you eat that with, Tom? Well, I might get some nice quince and maybe mm. some um, some fig and walnut biscuits. Oh, oh God, Maggie to die B's for. at the door. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Maggie. What a lim- What about a Limburger, Tom? Very oh, strong on the scent. Yeah, stunning. Um, um, beautiful, and, beautiful. Uh, obviously, I tried, you, I tried a beautiful Swiss the other day. Oh, did oh, you? Oh, wow. <laughs> Exclusive. Some cheddar. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Cut I off tried, fresh. I tried a magnificent mm-hmm. cheddar. 
met her at Subway the other day. <laughs> no way. I had a very rare one. I think it's German called Tasty. Um, tasty cheese. Really exclusive stuff. Um, not anybody can just afford that one. 500 cheeses. What else have they got on the go here? Uh, they've got Gelato Messina in store. You can buy Messina. That's good. Favourite ice cream chain. Yeah. You can buy that in store as so a little treat. they've got their own Messina. Mm-hmm. They've got an extensive plant-based range. Um, also, they specialise in Asian food, Mexican and South American food. What? Um, oh, my God. That's that. the thing that we're showing a bit on the screen it's right here. Popcorn. You've got honey that you put into your own. Look at the pizza's ready to go. Wow. It is extraordinary. Have they got a, like a chocolate water fountain in there? Is it like Wonka? Oh, like a fondue. Do you know yeah. what? That bread thing they just showed, I've seen that. So they've got a pulley system where the bread, the loaves of bread is stacked up so they're almost kept warm and then you pull on the rope and the loaf of bread drops down to your service, right, where you then put it into your paper bag using a lovely pair of tongs yeah. and then make your way to the <laughs> checkout. But it's one of those supermarkets too where you have to weave your way through almost like Ikea. So you can't just go, oh, I'll grab a punnet of blueberries for $11 and go straight to the checkout. you got to go all oh, yes. the way around. Right. you got to go all the way through it. But it is fancy. And the great news is my wife shops there. So it's only around $500 each time she does a buy. Can you live there? Yeah, you can. Yep. You can move in. They've got bunk beds just next to the pasta section. <laughs> Far out. It's just things have changed, haven't I, they? I got her a beauty the other day. Because she said, oh, I prefer the apples from there. I think they they seem fresher. And I went, oh, yeah. I said, you know they're all coming from the same place, don't you, no matter what supermarket you go to. And she went, no, no, I'm pretty sure they're fresher. So I did the shop on the weekend and I went to Harris Farm because she knew, I knew that she wanted me to go there. But she said, I never go there because it's too expensive. So then she's cleaning the apples, looking at them going, see, I told you they're not as fresh. I went, where do you think I got them? I said, I got them from Harris Farm. You've got absolutely, no, got her an absolute so beauty, classic mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a really funny story Wow, your story wedding anniversary is going to be a hoot On today. With that anniversary. Gig. Can I just oh, say, oh, can Apple you please switch inform Josh, our digital guy, oh. he would have been there, filmed the yeah, whole thing. that would go wild on TikTok. <laughs> when did your partner not know where the fruit was from? 1324 Terra. <laughs> that was amazing. That's awesome well, stuff. Thanks, that, guys. The Fitzy and Whipper Podcast. Hey, were you guys alive when... COVID hit? 2020. That, that, that'll be the conversation in, in yeah, quite a few years. Weird COVID thing. You know, the other one I think they'll talk about too is they go, oh, what do you mean? So there was a princess that was killed in a car accident? Tell me about that. Uh, well, you know, I can uh, imagine my kids doing an assignment on or something. Or they'll go, hang on a minute. So there are these things that you put in your mouth and you sucked on them, right? Yeah, and yeah. smoke would go into your lungs. Well, sadly, I don't think Siggy's will have gone. And it killed people? Yeah. Why would pe- Why would anybody do that? But why would people then embrace vaping when we know that it kills people? I'm just saying, Sarah, this will be something we look mm. back on yeah, when vaping right. and all these other things fill our world and cigarettes will look like, you know, dated toys. Just, uh, But I feel like in the friendship circle of Diseases, you know, when COVID hit, mm. you know, there was there was a moment where influenza A said, "What about me?" Yeah. And he popped his head up again. He did, but and this winter, I mean, it rocked me. Oh, me influenza too. A. Me too. I mean, there were even some new diseases that come out of nowhere. Well, we hadn't met these friends. Who? I mean, who was monkeypox? Monkeypox yeah. said to us, "What about me?" Yeah, what about, he got into it. What about the poor monkey? You know what I mean? Well, that's that's the not thing. fair. And then, uh, you know, I suppose the big one. Um, I don't know if you've heard. Well, you've got a new one, have you? Yeah, no, no. It's raised its head again. New South Wales has just confirmed its first case of measles. Measles have said. What about me? What about me, guys? It so, feels like there's a few diseases and viruses that have felt left out. I know. Completely. Measles has gone, guys, I have been sitting here and around a lot longer than yeah. this so-called cool COVID guy and this awesome new monkeypox man. Well, so what about me? Do you rem- about me? remember when measles were the in thing, you know? That was when the, we were they kids. They were the in disease back in the day. Is measles like an extension of chickenpox? Well, it's a, it's similar to a monkeypox, wouldn't it be? Well, you do get your little lumps on you, don't you? And are they itchy? Though, I think it, so. Right. It's, yeah, it's very. Similar. I mean, Mad I Cow know. was popular. I mean, that was huge, and meat coming out of the no UK. No one got Mad Cow here. Mad Cow in the UK in was the UK. huge. No, we didn't get it. There was a bit of Mad Cow here, wasn't was there? All your friends that would go over to the UK that were worried about Mad Cow. I it's mean, like when your mates went over to America and you'd ask them to get the new pair of Jordans. Yeah, Remember that? yeah. Go and get me some Mad it's Cow. Like, While you're over there, can mm. you get me some Mad Cow? When the um, bubonic plague comes back, that's when we'll know things have really made. 
Oh, no, no, no. What about the one, the well, one that the, the Mozzies give you? Oh, malaria. No, Zika was it? Oh, Zika virus. That was fun. Oh, oh, what yeah. about me? Yeah, Zika. I Zika miss. was fun, wasn't it? That was a great era, wasn't it, Zika? Oh, what about Legionnaires? <laughs> what? Swine flu? Is that what it's called? Getting, Swiney. What about bit, Swiney? Getting a bit nostalgic Me now. too. <laughs> Remembering back to those oh, great times. Oh, I had so many good viruses as kids. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Anyone that's um, thinking about losing a little bit of weight heading into summer, want to get that hot rig ready for the beach, don't worry about it, La Nina's coming, which is a fat man's best friend. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So I'm all right with that. Sorry, mate. Oh. No, I didn't ask for Weird Al. Sorry, I'll just jump Who's in there. Who's playing I... Weird Al? Yankovic. No, Daniel Radcliffe is playing Weird in Al film. in a new movie. Yeah. What do you mean? Are they making a movie about him? In the life of Weird Al, Weird, Weird Al Yankovic. It's called Weird, the Al Yankovic story or something. Can I... Um, how Where much... else does it go besides funny pun songs? Can we ever guess how much Weird Al is worth just from parody songs? All right, can anyone give me another one besides I'm fat, I'm fat, you know what, I'm fat. Don't... Isolate that. I'm. Uh, yeah, what else? Do not isolate he, that. He did a Nirvana smells like teen yeah, spirit smells one, didn't like... he? I don't know. That's a. Tommy, what do you got? Um, how Weird much? Al. I'll say 100 mil. Oh, I'm going to say 20 mil. I'd say t- yeah, 10. Says you're on the money, 20 mil. Yeah, 20. Still pretty good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot um, of money. We've done a lot of parody songs on this show which deserve 20 mil. Yeah. Tommy, what have you got there for um, what else is, is it, has he done? Um, have you got another one, Macca? <laughs> what do you got, Macca? <laughs> Oh, eat it. Oh, of course. Open up your mouth and eat it. Yeah, feed it, whatever. Wow. It's also party in the CIA. I oh, yeah. oh, Miley's song. So he's still doing them. Excuse me, I thought he'd hug it up. <laughs> well done on your pun work and the consistency over so many decades. 13, 20, 14. Um, if you've got any subtle indicators that people have been trying to tell you you've put on a couple of kilos, i tell you what wasn't subtle. So when I stood on the scales this morning... We're not going to play that game. I'll just tell you, 101. Oh, my. Oh, whoa. What, mean, did you, what did you get down to? Uh, my, to? My average is around 97. That's kind of my average weight. But You've then been socialising a lot. That's the thing. I don't... F- you know when you go... You know before you... Anybody else that's trying to lose weight will understand this feeling. Where you go, I'm only going to hop on the scales because I reckon I'm doing all right. <laughs> and you stand there in the nude mm. and there's no curves because you, your belt isn't holding anything in and therefore everything's semi-streamlined. So you go, it ain't that bad. First thing in the morning, I got this. And then I you get this. on and you go, oh, for... F- you got facial hair at the moment. The what, beard's what? not that heavy. There'd yeah. be 200 grams in it. Well, well, why are you going? Well, you're no, letting no. yourself go. No, no, don't say that. Need a haircut? No, no, haircut's fine. Talal from the corner your back store as well. That would have been a couple of kilos. You would think. Well, you would have thought, yeah. So if I trim the back and the beard and possibly the shoulders and tries, if you're lazy, you. Your bum. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I reckon you'd knock ten kilos around the crotch area. <laughs> they take a oh. cheek off. Okay, not lazy mate. bum over here. You're not lazy bum. <laughs> Certainly not lazy bum. Um, 101. Shock to the system. But I'm still happy. Use the hashtag fat and happy. Raise oh, the bat, you. mate. You made the ton. <laughs> I've been at 103 before. So, look, it's not disaster time, but I tell you what, we're flying close to the sun. How are you going with your workouts and stuff? Yeah, that's... You know what? You're going to have a crack at me when I say this. I honestly believe, because of how good I feel in the nude, that it's muscle. Because I said to you on Saturday night we went out and I said, Fitz, I always wear this jacket because I've got 15 jackets in the cupboard and only one of them fits. Even around my arms and my shoulders. Muscle my, memory. Because my buys and tries are so strong. Because you did... You, you played footy when you were 17. I've been on the rower too much. Mm. But the rower doesn't bulk. I've done some reading on it. <laughs> Let's move on to what upset me this morning yeah, and why we're on cardio. this topic. Oh, I do you would get that. Yeah, nah. I'm being targeted with ads on, on the gram. And they're kind of... They're fat man ads, like the big clothes ads. Oh, big and oh, tall. Yeah, yeah and I, I haven't been Googling. I haven't researched. Uh, it just listens, though. Why have we not been approached to be the faces of the big and tall shop? I know, well, because it's only in LA, isn't it? There isn't the big one and tall here. shop? Big and tall. Mm. My God. That would be perfect. It's perfect. See? Um, so they have Every long, cloud. Do they have long jeans there and very wide-waisted jeans? <laughs> yes. 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 It's unbelievable. Oh, shopping thing, heaven. The thing is, though, 
It's. I, I don't think the fashion is what you would wear. No, no. But when is... you are big and tall, it's. You know, oh, it's okay. A... So it's not two different things. No, no. Oh. It, it services. Oh, I thought it was like two different options. The bigger, taller man. See, this is an ad I've been served here, and that's this is called True Classic, a sponsored ad that's been served to me. Three reasons why women love this t-shirt for their man, and it offers. So that's other brand t-shirts, and oh, then yes. their t-shirt. Oh, slimming. So it slims down, so it's slightly longer, mm-hmm. and then it's kind of tighter around the bicep to give more of a fitness look. <laughs> Bless you, I'd sneeze Sorry. at that too, says. <laughs> that's my reaction when I saw it for the feelings. first time as well. And then I get sent, the, the other ads I get are just workout apps. Yeah. Subscribe to this, 28-day challenge, whatever you got here, seven-day ab workout. You're probably talking about it. So you're talking about it right now. Your phone's yeah. listening to it. And you search stuff and you're liking certain things. So no, it's I'm, just not, reading I'm, not, it I'm not Googling T-shirts for a fat man. No, but you, you Google workouts and you, you're Googling about your you know, grower. And you know the first time I think I probably realised that I was bigger than the average? And don't get me wrong. I'm really happy with how I look, and I love myself. Uh, Don't isolate that either. I'm fat, I'm fat, you know what, I'm fat. Okay, it's already been, that one's already been isolated. Snitch okay, is working right on time it. in the <laughs> audio department. Thanks, Snitch. Great job, mate. See you for the recap on Friday. You've done enough this week. But when I would make a joke to someone mm. and they wouldn't correct it, like I would go, oh, yeah, but that's a fat guy. I don't know if I'd do that. And they don't go, oh, you're not fat. Oh, is that they, like they just break? run with it. They None just of run us with have it. Said anything. Yeah, you guys <laughs> haven't commented and gone, "Hey, I reckon you're looking quite good at the moment." I, 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 feel, I feel strong. Mm. I think I've contributed that over the years, and I feel like you. I should be getting a thanks from you mm. for you know the jokes that we've done over the years on this show. Golden. Whenever we see listeners, they always go, we, "You're not as bad as we thought." Yeah, you they were. do. No, they say you're not that fat. Yeah, and I guess well, we, we should have said not it's, that fat. It's quite. It's a compliment. Could, I reckon I'm almost, and I don't joke about this because I know it's a serious illness. But I almost feel like I'm the opposite of anorexia. You're a binge eater. People binge. see me. Yeah, it's binge eating. People it is. see it's... me big. I don't see myself as big. No, but that's good. That's healthy body image. It's... I you look at my, see I yourself look at as myself big. and go, you're killing it, mate. Oh. That's Everybody fine. else looks at me and goes, huh, chubby guy seems happy. No, but they weird. don't. That's <laughs> terrible thing Chubby to guy say. seems positive for no reason. No. <laughs> I mean, we had a team lunch at Mr. Wong. Remember that? Oh, yeah. and it, you, when, when, when there's food that's been brought out yeah, on the table, on a lazy friend. Susan, to watch yeah. your, to watch your, mm. your leg starts to tap, you start yeah. to sweat. Yeah. Then, you, I mean, you've, you're a gentleman. You wait for the girls to grab one dumpling first, but then once <laughs> they do, bang, it is on. And how many that's ducks not. did you order? There were eight of us. Nine. Yeah. How many ducks did you order? Go on, just About say. Ten ducks. No, no, no. Legitimately, you ordered. Know, says, you ordered yeah. four. I did everybody the favour of ordering well, it? Four ducks. The sad nah. thing is, he went down to Centennial Park after that and made a couple of live ducks. <laughs> Chased him down. Oh, no, it's the end of the show, and we've got a couple of callers, but you know, Damn. we take me out. Oh, we're gone. Out. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Mo. Oh, Moe. Is that Moe in Rockdale? Hey, guys. Oh, you? Muhammad, oh, you, my Mo. man. How are you? Good, man. Don't, don't, don't be upset, man. There'd be water on the edge. Good. Women like that stuff. Right? Hey, can, can awesome. I, Moe's lost a lot of weight as well over the years and is looking amazing. You're sober at the moment as well, Moe. You're doing a great job. So yeah. how much have you lost, Moe? Well, always every, every year I fluctuate. I, I put on 30, then I lose 30. And then I put on 20, and then I lose 10. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, yeah. you've, you've, um, you've, you've got a wedding coming up, so you need to shred, Moe. Yeah, I need to lose weight. Because, you know, when you do the pre-wedding videos and the camera's on you, yeah. you don't need man boobs and a muffin top. It doesn't work. Yeah, well, but, Moe, you know what? I, I don't agree. I reckon when people look back on their wedding photos and go, oh, remember how fit I was then? Don't worry about that. Fatten up and blow out for your wedding. Oh, so you can look at it and go, gee, I was chubby. When someone told you, oh, yeah, you, mate, are you bulking? You're looking good. I'm like, mate, just fat. Yeah. <laughs> to decode it. Are you yeah, bulking? Thanks, Moe. You're Good the on best you, security guard we've ever had, mate. Jason in Padstow, <laughs> what did your mum say to you the other day, Jace? Hey, guys. Good morning. So I bought a nice new Hemley's jumper mm-hmm. and walked in thinking I was all good. Enough. And mum said, did they give you the wrong size? It looks small. Oh, oh. Jace, that is not fair. That yeah. is, you don't uh, deserve that. And if anyone should love you, it's your mum. And mum's <laughs> dropping yeah, jokes. Know. Like, hang in there, Jace. We're in this together, buddy. <laughs> Nicole in Campbelltown, how were you told to lose weight, Nicole? Uh, well, uh, good morning, guys. I was um, actually pregnant with my now 13-year-old yeah. um, and had a, a hospital appointment. 
Um, obviously, at every hospital appointment, they, they weigh you. Um, and the nurse looked at the scales and went, oh, well, we will talk about your weight once you've had the baby. Oh, oh my God. God. That is so Especially uncool. Especially if you're still pregnant with a 13-year-old. That's way overdue. <laughs> no, but my husband my husband was actually, I held in the tears for the oh, whole that's... appointment. Oh, Nick. Um, right. My husband was with me. We get out of the appointment and he, he looks at me and he goes, I like her, she was nice. Oh, oh he's a singer too. <laughs> he needed you needed backup. Good on you, Nick. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I start like a, a TikTok channel, which is like called Whip Fit. Oh, what? Oh, Whip cool. Fit, where you follow like my journey, yeah, that'll, um... my journey of my eating. Like when I, I, I'll film like me going to a donut and then sort of putting my finger up and going, no, no, no. And then I'll film me going to a banana or an apple and I'll go, and then, yeah, 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 with a thumb. Then, <laughs> then you'll be able to go over and look at your followers, followers which will be a donut as well. <laughs> <laughs> go, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Says you're looking healthy. Yeah, yeah. I know. My, which is my, what your mum said the other day. My mother-in-law said that to me on the yeah. weekend. You're looking healthy. The best was my grandma when I was 12 and I wore my brand new jumper and she said, jeez, you look puddin in that. Puddin-y? Oh, puddin But oh. I cop it all the time. I cop that, my God, are you pregnant? Real estate we agent would... asked me where my third was due the oh, other day. We would never call you puddin on the oh. show. Yeah, you would. It's I cute. split my dress on Saturday oh, you night. Did too. It's the only thing that fit me and it split from top to bottom on the dance floor. It's awesome good, to watch, though. Thank God really good to watch. You shouldn't have been doing the worm. <laughs> <laughs> the Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.